Hello, I'm Olin Chamberlain alongside Jack Aller and Connor Bertagas, and we're going to be talking about NBA free agency on today's Half of Bunk 5 radio show. So, Jack, what do you think is the biggest win of the free agency this year? You know, I personally think the biggest winner of this free agency is the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, they obviously got Russell Westbrook, but when a lot of people said that Russell Westbrook, LeBron, and AD would be a bad fit, what they did is they brought a lot of role players that would help with their spacing. They brought in Wayne Ellington, they brought in Malik Monk, who are good three-point shooters. But I would say a bunch of other winners, I would definitely say the Chicago Bulls. I mean, they brought in DeMar DeRozan, who's always going to be an all-star. They brought in Lonzo Ball to be their point guard. I mean, just a really good way to solidify a good playoff team. And I mean, while they might not be championship tier yet, they definitely elevated their status in their franchise. I think that's a very good thought, uh, Jack. Connor, anything you want to add? Yeah, I'm going to have to say the same. You know, the best overall help for the team to win a championship this year has to be the Lakers. You know, LeBron got the team he wanted. He got Russell Westbrook, got rid of like nine players on the team. But the person who really won the free agency was the Chicago Bulls. They really helped out Zach Levine a lot, giving them players like Lonzo Ball, who's a really good defender and scorer now. And, um,. Alex Caruso, so I think they definitely won the overall. Well, that's a great thought, but I think I'm going to have to go in a different direction than both of you guys. I personally think that the uh, the Heat won this free agency. Um, they added a great value in Kyle, Kyle Lowry, which adds another score to help Jimmy Butler um, maybe get over that hump in the East. I don't know if they will they can compete with the titles of the um, – uh, Milwaukee Bucks or the Sixers for right now, but I definitely think they can get over the hump by the first round as they didn't previously. What do you guys think about the Chicago? I mean, what do you guys think about the Miami Heat this year? You know, I think the Miami Heat made some good acquisitions in free agency, but I just don't see them being able to surpass the Brooklyn Nets or the Milwaukee Bucks. I just don't think they have enough depth to make it. Also, by trading Goran Dragic. That loses a lot of depth. I mean, by getting Kyle Lowry, who's good, but you also sacrifice young talent and precious to Chua and Goran Dragic, who is a great piece for them dating back to 2020. I mean, I think they do have a solid roster, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think the roster can compete with the top dogs in the East. Connor, thoughts? Yeah, no, Miami did a really good job adding Kyle Lowry to the team. I think he'll fit in with the team very well as the point guard position now. But, uh, you know... It was tough the year they were in the bubble. They were doing really well. Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson went off, and they went to the finals. But I just the next year, they fell apart. So I think this is a really good addition. Well, it looks like we have a caller from Bethesda, Maryland. Hello, you're on Half a Bunk Radio Show. Oh, hello. Um, I have a question. It's about um, Ben Simmons and the Sixers. Oh, wait, hold on. A caller, what is your name? Uh, my name is Carter. I'm from uh, Philadelphia. Okay, thank you. Um, should the Sixers try and trade Ben Simmons for better options at the point guard position, or do you think that the Sixers should stay with Ben Simmons? All right, thank you for the call, Carter from Philly. All right, so yeah. So the question was, do you think that Ben, we, you think the Sixers should look to break, trade to Ben Simmons, or should they look for another player? I mean, so they keep Ben Simmons. What do you think, Jack? You know, I think the Sixers' relationship with Ben Simmons is done. I don't think there's any way they'll be able to salvage a relationship. So I think he's got to be gone. I think some good options would be the Sacramento Kings. They got a lot, a lot of young talent, and they've been in the running to get Ben Simmons since the start. I mean, but I just don't think there's a chance the Sixers can bring back Ben Simmons, especially since he's had no talks with Joel Embiid, Daryl Morey, Doc Rivers. I mean, it just seems like that relationship is done. Connor? Yeah, I definitely think they should trade him at this point because the fan base in Philadelphia has definitely turned on Ben Simmons and he's definitely probably getting a little bit angry about it. So I think we definitely need him to go. But the problem is that most teams, they don't want as much value now for him. So we're going to have to find a way to get rid of him though. I would have to agree hearing from my sources, the other sources, the front, um, the fans of Philly do not like Ben Simmons. They want Ben Simmons out. So if your fan base is not like a superstar, I don't think you should keep him in. So um, we're transferring into our next um, topic, um, Rookie of the Year candidates. Who do you think will win Rookie of the Year? You know, I personally think it'd be Jalen Green. There is a bunch of people in the running. There's Kate Cunningham. There's Evan Mobley. But I got to go Jalen Green. I think Jalen Green is one of the best, if not the best player in this draft. 
and I think Jalen Green will flourish in Houston. He's got a bunch of good teammates around him that will just elevate his game every single night. And I just think Jalen Green has what it takes. He's definitely one of the most athletic players in the draft. He can do it all on the court. And I just think, it. don't get me wrong, it will be a close race, but I think Jalen Green will bring it home. Connor? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to say Evan Mobley on this one. You know, I've watched him through March Madness at USC, and he was just unstoppable. Like, no one could stop him. He's a seven-foot player that could play, like, power forward, center. He could shoot the ball very well, finish at the rim, and he's a really good shot blocker. And he could dribble the ball, too. So that's my pick for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I like I like both of those thoughts, but I'm going to go with the number one pick in the draft, Kay Cunningham. What can't I ask you as a viewer, what as a listener, what can Kay Cunningham do? He can defend at the highest level. He can score at all three levels. He's an elite playmaker. I think Kay Cunningham is the obvious pick for rookie of the year. Well, um, that's going to wrap it up for half a bunk five radio show. Again, you're here with Jack Adler and Connor Bertakis, and I'm Olin Chamberlain. Thank you for listening.